every day you got an opportunity to better yourself and I think that's what really motivates me is this, this desire to be the best version of Mitch that I can possibly be. So. What's up world? Welcome to the 39th episode of Grind Tour Success. I'm your host Ali Zaka. I have a great guest on here today. I got Mitch Bidapo. He is a ninja warrior. He's been on American Ninja Warrior. He's been in NNL competition, which is National Ninja League, UNAA, all of them. You went to Dallas too, didn't you? To compete down there? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma yeah, City? Yeah. yeah. Well, like, uh, what's the the Texas for NNL? Mm -mm, just the like the competition Dallas has every year is the Titan of oh, Texas no. Challenge. Oh no, I haven't done that one yet. Oh, I want you haven't? To. I want to. Oh. No, I haven't traveled up something yet. You'll kill it. Like yeah, that'd be a fun one. Oh, dude, you'll kill that one. I it's, should go. It's I should super. Go. <laughs> I'm not gonna say easy because, but I got to the second, to, actually I got to the last obstacle before the world wall. Okay. So, I don't it, know, looks, it looks deceptively easy, I think, because I think like, you know, each obstacle is pretty doable, but then people just murder that course and go so fast, and that's what it takes to go do well, right? Just to go right. Fast, so. Okay, I saw Joe Morosky do it, and he like killed it, and I was like, huh? I was like, all right, I gotta beat his pace, and I got to like. The tr lad transition and I just miss grip. Yeah. So I mean that's what happens when you go fast. You make mistakes and that's it's about being fast and being perfect. So fast and perfect. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you gotta try if, you, if it comes up again next year? Definitely gotta go down there. Yeah, I will. All right. So guys, let's get the interview started. So Mitch, first question: How many years have you done American Ninja Warrior? Uh, so I've competed three years on the show. Uh, season seven, eight, and nine. So my first season, I actually traveled all the way out to Orlando. I was busy for the Kansas City region that year, so I traveled all the way down to Orlando, um, and then Oklahoma City for season eight. Was lucky enough to finish fourth in the city finals that year. Made it to Vegas. Nice. And then last year, obviously competed here in Kansas City. Um, had to walk on, but was fortunate to get on. Obviously walked on with you. That's where we. I mean, we knew each other previously. But that was a good time to really hang out, and then uh, I ended up winning the city finals and go back, went back to Vegas. So right. Cool. Yeah. Which the show, I kind of wish they would put your run last, cause like he was like in the mid <laughs> middle of that run, uh, the episode. Which yeah, guys, if you go watch the episode, it's amazing. Like his run is phenomenal. Go watch it. You won't regret it. I <laughs> um, appreciate that. <laughs> It's on YouTube too, but uh, the full episode does a little more justice. There's more introduction stuff to it too, and yeah, it was a fun course. And I've watched that episode because like, I have Hulu, and that's where I see all the episodes on, so I just go through and watch them again, and that episode I always end up watching over and over again, so I watch Alex run, and yep. I watch your run, I'm just like, dude, just so close <laughs> every time. <laughs> like, you know when you watch them, like, oh, every time I watch it, I was like, I know the, re the result, and I'm still like, God dang it. Yeah. So I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it yet, but on the obstacle I failed on, I thought I was so much farther. I oh, thought really? I had so much farther to go. Oh. And I looked up and I was like, that's forever. And I looked back <laughs> on, on, the, on the video or like on the film and I'm like, I was feet away. I was so close and it kills me knowing how close I was and I didn't, I didn't finish it out. So I've been training like crazy, getting stronger. That's not happening again. I'm not failing there again. Let's so, go. Yep. So you've been to Vegas twice now. Yep. And was your second year, like, would you have called back your first and second year? Yep. Oh. Exactly. So, you don't mind me asking this, it's kind of like off topic, not no, really off good. topic, yeah, but just branching out a little bit. Like, what made you, when you did get the call back for the third year, what made you like, right, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go get in the walk online? Like, so at first I actually was really hesitant. I did, I was not like, right away I'm doing the walk online. I kind of actually took a step back and was like, I may not be doing Ninja Warrior this year. And that was actually really beneficial for me to take a big step back and be like, what's important to me in my life? And it's not necessarily about doing the show and being on TV. Granted, that's like the biggest stage and the most fun competition, but it's just about like the movement and doing the, the act of doing the Ninja Warrior type training. And that, that's what I really enjoy. I enjoy being able to move my body in so like fun and creative ways and everything like that. So I actually had committed to not doing Ninja Warrior last year. Oh wow! And then talking with everybody, Alex, Donovan, a lot of you guys, and you're like, "Yeah, we're starting to walk online." And I'm like, "Well, okay, it sounds doable." And they really like, you know, you can totally make these hours. I'm like, "All right, let's try it out." Totally tentative at first, and then after the first one, I'm like, "I'm in. I'm all in." You know, made every single deadline after that, every single check-in, and uh, 
was very, very happy I did. You was number what, fourth, fifth? When I started, I was number two, actually, by the time I ran. That's right. That's yeah, right. so I was number two in line, so I was the second person to run. Well, yeah. In, in reality, <laughs> yeah. I was the second person to run that night, but the episodes might say otherwise. Otherwise. <laughs> okay, man, so, like, how did you get involved in the sport? Like, what made you say, all right, this is Ninja Warrior, I'm going to die and go after this? Like, what, what was it? I know, because it's such a, like, kind of niche sport, right, that's a little different. Um, started rock climbing, and okay. I always liked rock climbing because... I'm even going to go farther back. So my background is in like wrestling and football and some like more classic sports. And really? Yep. So then after I got done with wrestling, because um, I wrestled a little bit in college, I you know I didn't really have a big athletic outlet, but I got into like weightlifting a little bit and some other stuff. That got so boring so fast because it's the same thing. It's very repetitive. I mean, you see gains, but you're doing the same type motions pretty much week in and week out, and that got very boring for me. So. Um, around that time I started really getting into rock climbing and I really like climbing because of like the the mental aspect of it like they call it a problem for a reason right like you're getting mm. out there and you have to solve it with your mind and your body and it's just such a mental engaging type exercise and you get done and you're like holy cow I'm tired you know so that's a lot of fun and it was while I was climbing in Lawrence actually um, with Chris O'Krulik I don't know if you're uh, um, Chris O yep Chris O he's an awesome guy great ninja and we were climbing together, and he's like, hey, man, try this. And I'm like, hey, man, try this. And you know that kind of one upsmanship? Yeah. yeah. Just two guys messing around, and like, you know, you've seen it all the time on the playground or whatever. <laughs> and so, uh, so you just one up in each other and um, got done. And he's like, man, you'd be great for the show because he's been on a couple times. Um, well, he's been on more than a couple times. But at that point, he'd been on only a few times. He was like, you should try out. Like, you would do really good for the show. So I, that was actually like season six. And I put an application for season six super rushed job I didn't put any effort into the application didn't get a call but wasn't surprised but that kind of got the little bug in my head so ever since then I started doing a little more obstacle training season seven I put together a good video that's when I got the call and then ever since then I'm like all right I gotta train you know I'm on the show and since then it's just been a wild ride I've like haven't stopped training I love it it's same thing as climbing you know you're solving problems like obstacles with your body and with your mind and it's so engaging it's all I do anymore for Athletic, like, workouts is ninja and rock climb, so. That's awesome, dude. Yep. Nice nice origin tale there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's going way back, <laughs> way back. right? <laughs> so what challenges did you face when you first got into the sport? Like, what what things, like, it's kind of like, this is tough at first, but now you're like, this is easy, <laughs> I'm just gliding through this. Uh, I, I'll say I struggled with, like, agility, leg power type stuff. Um, coming from a rock climbing background, I had good grip strength, I had good upper body strength, um, but things like the warped wall, um, jumping spider has been a nemesis of mine for the last couple of years. That's what's got me the last two years in Vegas. Really? Is a jumping spider, <sighs> yeah. So um, some of the, the more like agility parkour type things, so I've been working on that, working on, and that's been a lot of fun, training that aspect of it. So um, it's been cool though, it's, uh, I think, my ninja training really complements climbing and vice versa, right. right? Because ninja increases my overall fitness, and that helps to make me a stronger climber, where then climbing increases my grip strength and makes me a stronger ninja. So I think it's very uh, complementary. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so you're also a bio bioengineering student. Yeah. That right there just sounds like a, it's a mouthful for one. <laughs> and it also, going to college and seeing other medical students being around, it's like, I'm stacked with this, this, and this. I feel like your load has to be like a lot. And then you do that with Ninja Warrior. How do you balance all of that? It's been crazy, um, but it's been good. Like they, I think it helps me a lot. So definitely some time management skills, like um, knowing I got to dedicate this amount of time to being a student. I got to work hard during this amount of time. But then when, you know, when that day's done, I drop it and I stop thinking about it and I go do the ninja thing. and mm. that, and that Or training or whatever, climbing, just some kind of thing. And I, I'm feel like I'm pretty good about turning it on and off um, and that helps a lot um, but it, it's been good because as a bioengineer I work on like the micro level right I'm working with cells and proteins and stuff and very delicate work um, and a lot of mental work a lot of it's you know not even with your hands you're just very conceptual type stuff um, so it's been really good then to drop that and go to the gym and just like kick ass right <laughs> if, that, if that makes sense just moving and jumping and playing um and work the other side of my body instead of just my brain so that's been fun i, I think it helps a lot to have this kind of outlet 
Nice. So that's awesome, man. All right, another question. What drives you? Like, after all the success you've done or accomplishments, like been to Vegas twice, uh, been on the show three times, you're by an engineering student, you're balancing that with Ninja Warrior and all this great stuff, other competition you came to short and won. Like, what drives you still? Like, what keeps you going? That is a good question and a really hard question, right? Because it's easy to talk about the things I've done because those don't change and whatever. But when you start getting into like the why, why do I do what I do? And that gets hard. Like I, I actually spend a lot of time asking myself that same question. Why do I do this stuff? Um, Cause it is hard work, but it's, I've kind of come to the answer that I want to be the best version of myself, if that makes sense. So I want to be the smartest version of myself. So I'm going to get my PhD in bioengineering and I want to be the strongest version of myself. So I do athletic things like Ninja Warrior or whatever. I challenged myself to run a marathon last summer and I ran, ran one in October. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but just, um, you know, I want to be the kindest version of myself. So, you know, every day try and be nicer or something, but like every day you got an opportunity to better yourself. And I think that's what really motivates me is just this desire to be the best version of Mitch that I can possibly be. So dude, that's what it's about. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, replay that one. Just replay that. <laughs> like what he said for that answer. That's a good one, guys. Like, dude, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, so, here's the next question, or I guess the sixth question, I should say. Any advice to somebody who wants to get into Ninja Warrior? And also, yeah, I'll ask that part first, and I'll ask the second part later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, do it. Ninja Warrior is super fun. Not even just Ninja Warrior, but obstacle training in general. Like I said, I got so bored lifting weights and just classic fitness stuff. Um, obstacle type training is so fun because it engages your mind and your body, and it's functional fitness. You know, you're actually doing movements that mean something instead of so like isometric type stuff like weights. Mm -hmm. So first of all, do it. But if you have any recommend like or if you want any advice about getting into it, um, I would say do it for the right reasons. So getting on the show is fun, doing well on the show is fun, but that shouldn't be what motivates you, right? That shouldn't be why you do these kind of things because it's I think that's the wrong reason. And I think you should do it because of the like the obstacle training itself and because that's enjoyable. Like I find so much happiness and like the movement of it and just being able to move in fun and creative ways and that's what's so fun and that you know the training aspect and everything like that and so let that drive you do it for that reason and then who knows you might get on the show and do really well after that it's a kind of a side effect so huh that's my that'd be my advice at least that's a smart way to think about it never yeah, yeah. never thought of it that way huh that's, do that's it pretty for, cool yeah because i i like i said when i didn't get a call last year i really kind of sat like reevaluated why I do Ninja Warrior and I decided you know it's not because I want to do well on a TV show that definitely motivates me um, but I, even if I didn't get a call I'd keep doing this stuff right right as I know you would and I know we know so many other people who would because it's just stinking fun it's true <laughs> it is so true like just a little come up overcoming an obstacle or a challenge and like let's say for example the wing nut like it looks so weird to try and then when you finally do it and you beat it you're like Oh my gosh! Like this yeah. is this is great. Like er, the warp wall, which like you get up the warp wall for the fir very first time. Like, I feel like everybody remembers their very first feeling conquering that. Yeah. And you're like, yes. All right, what's next? Like it's such a great feeling. I know. I know what you mean. Yeah. I think I don't want to go back real quick. You you asked the last question like what drives you, and I said you know trying to be the best version of yourself. And I think Ninja Warrior is so cool in that way because you get those little level ups. You know what I mean? Like oh, I did the wing net, so I leveled up, or I did the warped wall, and I, level I leveled up. up. Yeah, and like. But you get those little, like, you have these little milestones that you can reach, and they let you know you're becoming a better version of yourself. And I think that is such a cool motivator and driver for that same reason. So, just linking, linking stuff together yeah, here. Dude, that's, <laughs> yeah, and, and like, and now I'm thinking about one of my friends, he had a conversation, sorry, I'm like, kind of digressing No, you're here, good, you're good. But he was like, so Ninja Warrior doesn't get boring for you? And I was like, no. He's like, why is that? Because like, it always changes. Yeah. It's always something new. Yeah. And it's a sport where it's you against you, really. Mm -hmm. Like, other sports, you always got to rely on somebody else to carry the load or somebody else to like, help out when you need it. Or if you're not, if you're not carrying the load, they can carry the load and you're carrying the load, they're not doing their job. Like, it, but this is that one sport where it's literally, it's on you. It's like, on you. It, yep. There's yep. nobody else to blame. But yourself, you and know. The only person you're trying to beat is you from yesterday. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. I like that. Oh, uh, who was it? I remember when I competed in KC with you guys. Daniel, is it Daniel Gill? Yeah, Daniel Gill. He was there, and Drew Drescher was there. I remember looking at them like, "Are you guys competing too?" They're like, "No, don't don't even worry about us. We're not competing." <laughs> and then they they kept saying, and Alex has said it too. Alex Carson has said this as well. It's like, 
it's you against you. Mm-hmm. It's it's always you against you. It's always you trying to beat your time. Like don't really pay attention to everybody else's time and what the setting because if you get farther, and you it's just you. Yeah, yep. just you. It's so. you versus the course, and nobody else really matters. And that's yeah. So it's it's a really good sport, guys. You want to test yourself and listen to what Mitch said. That's, that's great. <laughs> Also, here's another part of that question. Any advice to somebody who wants to like create a video, an audition video, like a casting video? Any advice for them? Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, you should do Ninja Warrior for the the movement part of it, for the having fun. But obviously, being on the show is incredible. It's a ton of fun. We can both attest to that. And to get on the show, you gotta you know put in your submission video, and that's quite a process. Um, the show or the the producers of the show put out those guidelines, and you can follow the guidelines. They talk about you know be ecstatic like uh, they, they're looking for energy on camera and so give them energy um, but also just don't BS it I think they they can really see through the gimmicks and the BS and all that kind of stuff and with them getting so many submissions anymore they're looking for just real genuine people anymore so um, that that'd be my thing you know have energy be the best version of yourself on camera um, you know the happiest and most excited and everything like that show them your best side um, but show them you, you know, don't BS it. That's awesome. Now, last question. Well, before I go to that, I want to say one, thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate you coming to this episode, taking the time out of your day to do this. That's awesome. Definitely. I, I'm. Thank you for the invite. I'm actually, I'm honored to be here. So thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. And keep, keep grinding, keep being the best you can, best you can you, I swear to say, the best version of what you can be, yeah, keep yeah. doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, huh, I know I want to say, but it's hard yeah. to say. But dude, like, that's awesome, man. And keep setting, like, goals and keep being a good role model to everybody in the ninja community. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't think thank of you. one bad thing to say about you, dude. Like, thank you. this that's is me being, compliment. Uh, no problem, man. Like, this is me coming out of my heart. Like, I can't think of one bad thing to say. Like, when I hear Mitch, like, dude knows how to go at it. He's one of the top-notch ninjas I've been around, one of the top-notch ninjas I've seen. Always a great guy. Doesn't disrespect anybody. Like, I never heard you say one bad thing about anybody. And, dude, that's, that's keep being really, that great person. Thank you. That means a lot. And now the last question. How do you define success? You saved the hardest for last, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question, too. Uh, I thought about this one a little bit. I got a little prep for this question. Um, I think success is two parts. You have to have goals and trying to achieve those goals, but you also have to find happiness doing it. And they're not mutually exclusive. You have to have both of them. So what I mean by that is like, you can't just be sitting around doing nothing, right? You can be happy doing nothing, but sitting around doing nothing, that's not being successful. But at the same time, you can't like be striving for these goals and be miserable doing it. So you need both. You gotta be setting these goals, having these lofty dreams, but find happiness as you do it. So whether that's, you know, trying to be a bioengineer, ninja warrior, whatever, and I'm trying to find as much happiness as I can because that's the, the stuff I enjoy to do, and I'm reaching these goals, um, you know, I, I think that's it. But also, like, it can be anybody. It can be a teenager that just got his very first job, and that was his goal, and he's super stoked and excited to get this job, then I think that's successful. And so, you know, it's whatever it is, just keep, you know, grinding for success, grinding to achieve those goals, but um, make sure you're happy in what you're doing. I think that's successful. Dude, that's awesome. Guys, replay that. We listen to that again. Mitch, thank you once again for coming on. I'll put your information in the bio so you guys can follow him on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or whatever other platform you're on. I'll put that in the bio. And, dude, thanks for coming on. And keep going after your goals and dreams. Thank you, Ollie. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Thank you guys for watching this episode of Grind Towards Success. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe, follow, share, or whatever platform you're listening or watching this episode on. See you guys next time. And keep being awesome. Thank you guys for watching this episode. I really appreciate it. Please like, comment in the comment section below, and please subscribe for more episodes of Grind Towards Success, movie breakdowns, or whatever it is you're watching on my channel. I have different stuff from interviews to other movie reviews to wrestling reviews. If you're a wrestling fan, please, please subscribe if you want to see all that and see what's going on. Also, you can follow me on Snapchat here. Follow me on Instagram there to see what I'm doing in my personal life as well as my business and Ninja Warrior. And lastly, you can watch the last episode of Grind Tour Success here. You can watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns there. Thank you guys once again. I really appreciate it. See you next time. Keep being awesome.